Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast here live out of the WeBank National Conference and uh, the, the trade floor. We're on the trade floor and in the Shell booth, and it's uh, alive and kicking out here, so you will be hearing some uh, background hum as we in our Shell booth, as well as all the surrounding booths, are rocking and rolling, talking with uh, WBEs about future business opportunities. A lot of action. Out a lot here. of action going here, a lot of action. And I'd like to introduce our next guest, Annie Lidge, who is the Supplier Diversity Director with Floor. And we've asked Annie to come and join us. She is one of, uh, Floor is one of Shell's large prime suppliers. And um, as we continue in the theme of talking about, or move into the theme of find your fit and providing information for WBEs to think more broadly about the overall supply chain of energy. We asked Floor to come and sit with us and tell us a bit about their business, both, both with Shell and more broadly, and, um, and to share a little bit about the overall supply chain and moving into a conversation about capacity building. So let me start by asking Annie to uh, introduce herself a little bit a little on her background and then tell us about Floor and what does Floor do and uh, what do they do not only for Shell but more broadly. All right, very good. All right, thank you, Deborah, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and to participate and represent Floor at this wonderful, wonderful national conference for women. Um, I am Annie Lidge, and as Deborah uh, explained, I'm Supplier Diversity Manager for Floor. I started my Floor career in 1974. Um, always uh, in the procurement uh, industry. I have uh, been supplier diversity manager at Fleur for coming up on four years now. And uh, during that time, we have, uh, our goal has been to build a robust supplier diversity program uh, with inclusion of women and minority businesses. Fleur, uh, we are a global uh, leader in engineering, procurement, fabrication, construction, and engineering and project management. We uh, have global reach with uh, projects around the world. We service uh, several different business lines, including um, oil and gas, power, industrial services, infrastructure, mining, um, and uh, government, uh, to name a few. So we, um, we, meet, it, we meet the challenges, um, and we have a full spectrum of services that we provide for clients such as yourself. Thank you, thank you. So thinking about then the, the range of things that Floor does, what is it that you believe that WBEs should do? So what kind of research, what kind of information should they be looking for? What do they need to do and what do they need to know to prepare to approach Floor about business opportunities? Deborah, I think that's an excellent question and I think it's one that um, our WBEs truly need to adhere and to understand when you approach a company such as uh, Shell or Fleur, they first need to know and understand our business and know where they fit within our business. And uh, to give you an example, um, because Fleur is a construction uh, company, that's one of the uh, services that we provide to our clients, uh, oftentimes people will think we're building um, retail stores or we build uh, high-rise buildings and, and that's not the type of construction that we're in. So I would encourage any of our women on businesses to go to our website, understand our business, understand where they fit, understand where they can bring value, innovative solutions, and um, just really do the research and be prepared and ready. Uh, when they come. Oftentimes when we bring them in to introduce them, we want them to be able to sell their products and services knowing I bring value here. I bring you a solution to a problem that you may not even be aware that you have. Mm -hmm. so, helping them to understand that. So as you, as you think about that, that um, being prepared and understanding the industry and understanding Floor's business and Floor's needs. Can you think of, of maybe one or two examples of suppliers who seem to have, have done that done that well and have kind of led, uh, demonstrated the kind of, um, of capabilities and approach that you think makes sense? Uh, absolutely. Within our facility services group, we've highlighted one of our company's um, 
Torres Trucking, a Hispanic-owned company that does our facility, our internal facility relocation. And um, we, used, we had a major issue with moving our computer equipment because of you know, their sensitivity to um, how that's handled. And they approached us with creative solutions for moving um, that equipment that was cost saving, uh, brought a cost savings to us, very innovative approach. Our company was very pleased with them. So not only were they already doing business with us, but they're constantly looking at ways to help us to cut costs and to um, anticipate ahead of time how they can bring additional value. So that's a, that's a great example. Yes. So let's turn a little bit now to, to WeBank and, um, and WBE. So what, how long has Floor been involved with WeBank and why? Why is, is it important for Floor to be at WeBank? Why are you here? Okay. And what are you looking for specifically here? Okay, all right. Um, Floor has been a member of WeBank from the very beginning. Our previous uh, CPO, Jim Scotty, was one of the original uh, members of the board uh, when WeBank kind of broke off into its own organization. So we've been in lockstep with uh, WeBank, like I say, from the beginning. Um, I believe as our company's business has kind of ebbed and flowed, our program has kind of, you know, we've had high uh, times of anticipation when work is really busy, and uh, then there's times when we've had our lows. But we participate in WeBank, first of all, because we believe in providing opportunities to women-owned businesses. Secondly, it's a major requirement of many of our clients, such as yourselves, and uh, it's a differentiator for us as a prize. We want to be in lockstep with you know, our clients, such as yourself, that believe in this program, and Floor, we feel that women-owned businesses bring value to us because they can help us in areas where we may not even be familiar. They can bring some creative solutions to us, um, and they help us to, to grow stronger, uh, to be better in a lot of things that we do. Some of our own money that we spend, not our clients' resources, but our own money is in the area of IT. And this is where we have a major impact on women-owned businesses. We use them in staff augmentation. We use them in a lot of our peripheral IT um, equipment and supplies. And that's, again, not our clients' money, but that's Fleur's money. And by utilizing these companies, we've seen the value and have kept them working with us for many years. Thank you. So now let's, let's turn the, to the topic of capacity building. So from, from your perspective, just define capacity building. What does it mean? Okay, and for us, for capacity building, it means that when we are engaged with a woman-owned business or any of our diverse businesses, we like to utilize them and be able to continue to build to help them to grow and so that they're able to support us in, in various areas. So maybe they start out with a smaller scope then we're able to build on that and continue to grow them and to utilize them for many years to build that relationship. So not only do they grow with us, then it helps them to be able to go and compete with other large companies like ours, like yours. And uh, I know that it's helpful to us when we meet women on businesses that have done business with Shell, so it helps us. Um, we already know that they are accustomed to the requirements of safety because it's, it's important to you, it's important to us. So um, we really look forward to being able to transfer the relationships that we've built on one project and hopefully be able to move them to the next project and help them, again, to grow and to build upon that expertise and experience. So for us, capacity building, and, and I think Shell as well as a lot of corporations today are going through uh, is where we're trying to reduce the amount, the number of companies that you're trying to manage within your supply chain. There is no different. So when we're able to help companies to uh, grow and move from one project to the next, we want to continue and, and maintain those relationships instead of always just kind of adding new ones for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So, so as a as a major prime to Shell. When you think about about capacity building and you think about the value it adds for you, but then also as we are, as, as Shell and your customers are thinking about capacity building for our needs, how do you see Floor's role as a prime 
and capacity building that benefits Shell. Okay, uh, I believe that when we take on any Shell project and we can bring women-owned businesses with us as partners, we know that this is important, an important um, initiative for uh, Shell and it helps us to be able to showcase these businesses. So Shell is able to see that, okay, we brought this um, woman-owned business to the table with us, and maybe, possibly, they can uh, then develop their own personal relationship with Shell as well. So uh, this is with many of our clients that we have been able to, um, they brought companies to us, and we, in turn, have done the same for them. So I, I believe that when we find these great women-owned businesses, and there's so many of them, uh, and when we're able to help them by giving them those opportunities and helping them to grow, then it benefits us all as well as our communities. It does. It does. So, so when you when you're when we're thinking about the WBEs themselves, what do they need to know, and what do they need to do to prepare? in terms of capacity building? What should their mindset be for capacity building? Uh, Deborah, I think that's an excellent question, and it's one that I think that maybe some businesses are not aware of the fact that when you get that opportunity, no matter how small it may be, they should constantly be looking ahead. What's my next step? What's my next approach? If I get this opportunity with Fleur, how can this help me in my opportunities I'm going after with Shell or with Exxon? And more than anything, again, it's about being prepared, having those goals, and know where they want to take their business. Um, you know, if you're going after scope of work at Fleur and you are aware that you may not have the resources to go after a large scope, go after that small one. Get it? Build on that. And I, again, it's about knowing where you fit. If you feel that, okay, I may not be able to go after that large shell project that Fleur is executing here, but maybe I can try and get my foot in the door by going through industrial service divisions or you know, one of the other divisions that may not have those million dollar scopes of work, but I can go for the one that's you know, several hundred thousand. Good deal. Yeah. So, so maybe maybe let's talk a little bit about a couple of examples. I'll, I'll share one from, from Shell's perspective. So um, a couple of, of, of WBE capacity building examples. One is a, a pretty large business that supplies um, technical, um, technical manpower consulting level okay. power for manpower for Shell. Um, they've been a supplier for a number of years. And uh, we, we, think, we knew or believed that there ought to be potential for them to continue to grow their business with Shell. And we spent some time with them understanding their current capabilities and where they wanted to take their business. And this, the business in this case was Synergy and June Ressler is the, is the CEO. Okay. And one of the things that they, they indicated they really wanted to be targeting was to grow internationally. And so we, we helped them to get connected to some of the right um, global procurement uh, people. We put them forward for a global agreement to supply for Shell. And they were able to move to that global level to compete and they were successful in getting a global service, master service agreement to begin supplying not only in the U.S. but also uh, globally for Shell mm -hmm. and they've set up offices in Europe and Australia and they've begun to have some broader business and at the same time continue to grow their business with Shell in the US. Um, another company that was a procurement services company where within Shell we knew we were going to be having a major push to have uh, uh, to broaden our procurement services space and bring more of our purchases into external procurement services and we worked with this this company in this case Brewster Procurement to help them get prepared for larger opportunities okay. and um, worked with them on a number of things including a continuous improvement um, joint program or joint initiative between Shell and Brewster and as a result they continue to grow their business as well. So are there any examples you would like to maybe share? Well, I, I think we have limited opportunities um, for that type of capacity building, Deborah, simply because we're, we don't really own any uh, or 
we don't make any fake. Yep, if got that you. makes sense. Yep. Uh, we provide, we're a service organization and we provide services to our clients. So we basically go from project to project. Mm -hmm. We do have various opportunities where we may have a long-term relationship with a client um, in industrial services that may go for many years. Mm -hmm. And we, once we are able to bring on, on a woman-owned business at that time, and we can grow with them. We yep. do have such, um, such a project within our industrial service, which is a, woman, a, a staffing company, mm -hmm. where uh, they provide craft labor for one of our facilities there. And we've done, I think, um, I hope I'm not misquoting, but I believe and uh, for the last several years, we've done over $10 million uh, with this woman-owned business. Yeah. So we do have those instances, but it's basically because it's project by project, yes. we have somewhat limited opportunities to do that. Now we do look where we have, again, our internal skin within floor, but because each of our locations we try and make sure that we're supporting our local, wherever we have an office location, that local community as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And so our opportunities are somewhat limited there. So local content is important for all for all of our Absolutely. operations as Absolutely. well. So doing business both with minority and women-owned businesses and small businesses, but also locally. Absolutely, absolutely. And we definitely try, um, wherever we have a project site, to make sure we're utilizing women-owned businesses in those areas, in the city and the state, wherever we're operating, and making, hopefully, we're able to leave that community better because we were there. Absolutely. Uh, and ha hopefully having health companies to grow where they can take on more challenges with other companies because we were there and we're able to work with them. So, but I think when you look at the area, um, and, and this one may be a small one, but uh, promotional items, for instance, we do have a global agreement with a large company similar to ours, and oftentimes when we try to include some of our women-owned businesses for those opportunities to bid, we have just not been able to find one that could provide, um, you know, the products and the, with that uh, amount of reach. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that eventually we'll be able to meet some of those women-owned businesses that can have that true global reach and be able to take that on. So it sounds like an opportunity for uh, for applying for some WBEs, some enterprising WBEs to apply um, WeBank's motto, join forces absolutely. <laughs> and succeed together. Absolutely, absolutely. It's one of the things so, right now that we are we're stressing with a lot of our women in diverse businesses about creating those strategic relationships and yep. making sure that you know, you're able to just even grow um, your capacity for going after a large scope of work by yep. teaming. So yeah, I think that's definitely today where a lot of these, our women-owned businesses should be looking, mm -hmm. because even uh, within our, our fluid world and what we do, we have joint ventures all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's our new world, and hopefully that's what a lot of them are aiming for. So, so are, are there any, as you look out um, across the, the trade floor here, are there any other kinds of types of services that you are kind of out on the lookout for? Well, uh, again, it would basically be on a project by project basis. Mm -hmm. So, for um, instance, we are now engaged in a large project um, power project with some of our clients in the Carolinas, mm -hmm. and I know that for the facilities that we're building for them, they have some um, very robust goals for women-owned and diverse businesses to break it down into what categories. Unfortunately, I don't have that with me today, um, but what we're trying to do is uh, get to meet companies. We have a process we call a pre-screening process, mm -hmm. sort of like, um, well, it's like pre-vetting them. Not a pre-qualification, yes. but pre-vetting. And so today, we are signing up companies that says, here, take this form, send it back to us, give us some information about your company. We, in turn, will present this to our procurement folks they will look at these companies and go to their sites and find out are these companies companies we want to invite in, meet them, and feel that they have the uh, capabilities, the, the capacity, the resource, the revenue to, to uh, do business with us on these projects, and we get them ready. So once they've gone through that process, they will become part of a list of companies that we have met with, we pre-screened them, and they're deemed ready to do business with us. So when we have those projects, these are not folks that have just registered with us. They've met with us, we know them, 
and we want to now look for those opportunities. So those projects where we have those clients' requirements, they will be one of the first ones to get that list and say, here's a list of companies that we would like for you to consider in your bid list. And, and so for in that particular example, of course, you'd be interested, highly interested in companies that have a presence in the Carolinas. Yes, and it does not necessarily mean that they have to be from the Carolinas. You know, when we have companies that can do business national, mm -hmm. um, you know, we encourage that as well. Because if you provide a product or a service, uh, you know, we have a woman-owned business that's providing steel to us on some of our projects and may not necessarily always be in that local area, but they can ship, they can provide. So yes. it doesn't mean that you have to be right there. If you know I've got a dynamic product or dynamic service that would benefit, we don't care where you come from. You can still compete, that's but we right. do like to have that local uh, uh, content where we can. But on projects such as this, we're looking for qualified women-owned, minority-owned businesses, no matter where you may be. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Annie. Well, thank really you, Deborah. appreciate your spending some time with us and getting uh, letting our podcast audience learn a bit more about Absolutely. Floor. Again, Floor is a major prime supplier to Shell and to many of our peer organizations. And I have to say that Floor is one of the one of the strongest and most active of our prime suppliers in organizations like WeBank and some of the other diversity organizations and really has has um, very been exemplary in living out Floor's value of being committed to a diverse supply chain and, and has been recognized in a number of, of, of venues for that commitment. So thanks again, Annie. Well, thank appreciate. you for having us, Deborah, and we appreciate you as a client, and I know that our management as well as our sales force appreciates you all, and just thank you for this opportunity to participate today. Thank you. All right, thank you.